Hey guys, what is up? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the Wildfire Virus, which was featured in the Walking Dead television series, based on the incredible graphic novels written by Robert Kirkman. Although there were many attempts to study and understand the wildfire virus during the initial stages of the outbreak, scientists were ultimately unable to determine whether this was a man-made catastrophe or an act of nature. In the television series, it's explained that everyone in the world had suddenly contracted the zombie virus, which had the ability to essentially bring the dead back to life. Once it had infected a host, the virus would remain dormant within the brain, leaving the host to appear otherwise healthy. However, once the host had died, the virus would become active, infecting and reviving neural structures in the brainstem and parts of the cerebellum, effectively turning the deceased person into a zombie. As mentioned before, it's explained that most, if not all human beings on the planet had been infected with the dormant strain of the virus, which would suggest that it was either airborne, waterborne, or both. I know that a lot of people assume that getting bitten in the Walking Dead universe meant that you were now infected with the virus, but this is not the case here. As mentioned earlier, contrary to conventional zombie fiction, a zombie bite in the Walking Dead universe doesn't mean the transmission of the virus itself. This is due to the fact that everyone on the planet had already been infected with the dormant strain of the zombie virus through unexplained means. The virus is merely waiting for the body to die before it can activate itself and take over the host. What the bites and scratches caused by the walkers actually do is begin the process of irreversible contamination as their blood and saliva, which contain an active strain of the virus, is believed to induce a cytokine cascade, which is a fatal immune reaction consisting of a positive feedback loop between cytokines and white blood cells, which is further exacerbated by the bacteria that resides in the mouths of zombies. This is why death can sometimes be avoided if a bite occurs on an appendage that is quickly amputated, though the success rate of such procedures by untrained people was quite low. If a person is bitten by a walker and cannot amputate the wound or deal with the loss of blood, an active strain of the virus will begin spreading throughout their bloodstream. It's here that the virus will begin to transform and induce a fatal cytokine storm, which causes fevers, aches and fatigue. As the infection develops, the virus spreads throughout the brain, infecting neural structures and synapses. Finally, the adrenal glands hemorrhage as the brain shuts down. At this point, all brain activity would cease to exist, along with that of any major organs. After a varied passage of time, the brain will then reanimate the bodies into walkers. Now, the walkers are essentially the reanimated corpses of people that have regained limited functionality, coupled with an insatiable desire for flesh. These undead beings do not appear to feel or respond to pain, and after their subsequent reanimation, are able to survive brutal injuries that would incapacitate or kill a regular person. What's most worrying about the walkers is that, like conventional zombies, they do not require sleep, water, or food to survive, yet they still maintain an unbounded level of hunger for flesh. It's explained that these undead were attracted to sound and movement and had the ability to detect scents, which enabled them to differentiate between the living and the dead. This is evident as some survivors are seen walking among the dead covered in their scent without alerting the walkers to their presence. Their individual strength is dependent on the physical makeup of the infected host and the length of time that they've been infected. This is due to the fact that with the passage of time, all zombies will decay, causing their muscles and entire body to become weaker over the years. However, even in a decomposed state, they are seen capable of taking a lot of physical damage, and anything other than attacks to the head, the severing of their spinal cord, or dismemberment essentially left them undaunted. As Daryl had explained earlier on in the TV series, the only way to truly bring down the walkers was by destroying their brains. Speaking about the intelligence of the walkers, the creator of the series, Robert Kirkman, had this to say. In the beginning, we saw the walkers do things like using a rock to help bash the doors in, or turning a doorknob, asking whether there was a reason we don't see so much of that anymore, before answering his own question and saying that this was because older zombies were less capable than those that had recently undergone the process of reanimation, and therefore still retained small fragments of their past selves. Though the mindless nature of the walkers made a handful of them quite easy to deal with, provided you had the right training and weapons at hand, they are truly terrifying in their massive numbers, aimlessly following each other as a horde looking for their next meal. It also did not take long before you found yourself surrounded by a horde, which essentially made travelling undetected the priority over combat. I'm a big fan of the comic series, and I also love both The Walking Dead and Fear The Walking Dead. 
From the very first episode, I knew that we were watching something that was more emotionally resonant than anything that had been attempted before in the zombie genre. From seeing Rick struggle to find his family, to the many obstacles the group must overcome along the way, The Walking Dead is a visceral, emotional, and bleak outlook at the potentiality of an unexplained zombie outbreak. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to you guys who suggested we take a look at the wildfire virus from The Walking Dead. If there's any other content you would like me to check out, don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. You know, I found Randall, right? He turned, but he wasn't bit. We're all infected. What? At the CDC, Jenner told me. Whatever it is, we all carry it.